Hey there, Julian from Emberstack here, and in this video, I am going to show you how you can solve virtually any problem that you run into in Webflow using ChatGPT. So what we have here is just a div that is red and it's called block. We have a button and we have a heading one. And what we wanna happen here is that when you click this add block button, it's gonna add another new block to the page. And then this number here is always gonna be updated with the correct block count. So that sounds like something that if you don't know how to code can get a little bit complicated. And maybe you've tried using ChatGPT before to help you with this, but it got a little bit confusing. And the reason for that is because well, ChatGPT doesn't really know what's going on in your Webflow environment. It doesn't have the context in order to help you solve the problem. So what we're gonna do here is take this problem, make sure that we can put it into little pieces that we can tell ChatGPT, then we're gonna get the solution from it. And if we need to, we're gonna troubleshoot it along the way. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into it here. So in Webflow, first things first, I need to look and think, how is it that anyone, let alone ChatGPT, is going to know what it is that we're trying to do. I can't just go to AI and say, hey, I have a button and I want you to click it and then it, it adds a new block. It's not gonna know that. So what do we have here? First, let's break it down into variables. So we have the number, we have the button, and we have the block. So the block is something that we're going to want multiple of them to be created. Let's just keep this class here that's called block. Then we have this button here, and this is a unique element. So let's give it an ID and just call it button. And then same thing with this number. Let's just go ahead and call it number. So now what we can do is take a look here and say, okay, when button is clicked, I want you to create a new instance of block, and I want you to update the number of number. So let's go ahead now into ChatGPT and start a new conversation and make that happen. So here we are and we've written our prompt to ChatGPT and what I decided to do here was to break it down into the first step and then we'll get to the other ones after. I find if you throw a lot of things in either due to the fault of AI or due to the fault of yourself, it just gets a little bit confused. Now, what we've done here is first of all, greeted ChatGPT, said, hello there, my friend. And then we said, I would like to write a script, which will do the following. And this is a phrase that I use all the time, because if we don't say that, then it doesn't know what our page is, where we're building our page, and it might provide a couple of different solutions. This way we're being very clear, write me JavaScript, which is gonna do what I want. So I almost always started out with that. And then I say on my page, I have the following, dot block, which means an item with the class of block, hashtag number, which means an item with the ID of number, hashtag button, which means item with the ID of button. So now we've broken down and told ChatGPT, this is everything that exists. This is what you have to work with. Don't worry about anything else. Then we're saying the context, which is that to begin at the start when the page loads, there's only one block. Now, what I want you to do is count the amount of blocks on the page and then update the number. So we've given it all of the context and we've told it what we need to do. Now, this isn't the whole thing we need to do, but we're gonna start with that. So let's go ahead and just send that off right now and see what's get, what gets sent back. So as you can see here, we are getting sent this. And this looks absolutely perfect. Now, one thing that I find quite a bit, especially if you're somebody who isn't so used to working with code, is that ChatGPT will assume that you know how to work with code. And if it does that, it might just send you a little section of the script and explain to you how you can make that happen. So the sentence, please send me the full complete working script, always helps with that. In this case, we're good to go. The only thing that's missing is the script tags and you could ask ChatGPT to add those in, but you know, they're pretty easy. So let's just go ahead and click copy on that. And then let's head back over into Webflow open our page settings, and we're gonna get that code in there. So first things first, let's put in the script tags. There we go. Now let's hit enter and paste in our code from ChatGPT. Now let's hit save, and let's go ahead and publish the site. All right, our site is now published. Let's see what we've got. So now, as you can see, awesome. It says one, and that was updated from the script because there's one block. 
So now let's go back into ChatGPT and just expand on that a little bit. The next thing that we wanna do is make it so that when the button is clicked, a new block is added. So let's go ahead and write that prompt right now. All right, so now we have thanked ChatGPT for its beautiful work and we're saying I'd like to expand the functionality. And the reason why I added that part is because if you don't say that, it may give you a separate script which is sometimes good, but in this case, we want it to be one script altogether. So I said, I'd like to expand the functionality. If I wanted it to give me a new separate script, I would say it now, please give me a new script that does not affect the first one. So anyways, when button, and I'm saying button, it seems grammatically incorrect, but I'm referring to it as button because, you know, I described it as hashtag button up here. Uh, when button is clicked, I would like to create a new block and add it to the page. So let's go ahead and hit send and see what we get back. So this one should be pretty simple, shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Let's see what we get back. There we go, so ChatGPT has updated our script. Let's just go ahead and hit copy on that, go back into Webflow and paste it in. hit save and publish, of course. And hopefully now what's gonna happen is that when you click add block, it is going to add a new block to the page and the previous thing is not gonna be broken. So as we can see, the previous bit is working just fine. And when we click add block, it is updating the count, interestingly enough, but it is adding these right down here. So let's go ahead and just try to do some troubleshooting to see why it is doing that. So. I think I have a suspicion about what it's doing. Right, so it is adding a block as a child element of the body. And again, even if you don't know code, this inspect element is your best friend because it can point out what is actually going on behind the scenes. So we can see here that it is doing this. We don't want that. We want it to be going next to block. So. That means we want it to go into section underscore main. So let's actually go ahead and copy that class. And then let's go back into ChatGPT and tell it what is going wrong and what we actually want to happen. All right, so now we've explained that it is making block a child of the body and we want it to be a child of section main. So let's go ahead and hit send on that. There we go. So now let's go ahead and copy this and paste it in to our project and see what we've got this time. All right, so here we are. Let's see if it is working as we want it to. So let's click add block. There we go. Now, as we can see, it is doing exactly what we want it to completely correctly. And it just took a couple rounds of talking with ChatGPT. So there you go. Now, again, just to reiterate, what we're trying to do here is solve some sort of problem. And we're trying to use ChatGPT to help us with that. But ChatGPT does not have the same context that we have. So what we're doing is making sure that we label everything in a way that Webflow understands. So IDs, classes, whatever it may be, attributes even, I use quite often. And then we go to ChatGPT, lay out the environment, tell it everything that it needs to know, and then tell it what our desired outcome is. If it's something very simple, like I just want the amount of elements to be displayed, then that's it. But if you have a multi-functional function feature that you're trying to make, then if you do it in parts, ChatGPT is going to have a much, much easier time. So that is it. I hope this helped. Let me know and I will talk to you soon.